Mr. Locario and Miles Cunningham. This is that real shit, not that fake shit. The only radio show that's not afraid to tell you the truth about the game. This is the Bad Boy Radio Show. Remember, the truth is inside you. Yeah, people. What up? What's going on? Yeah. You guys have tuned into the Bad Boy Show. You feel me? So it's Mr. Locario Miles Cunningham in the place. You feel what it? Up, so, what up? Um, today, today's topic, we're going to be talking about how to make the dating game easier for you. Okay? Because Word. it's hard out here, man. It's hard. So we're going to give you guys some tips on how to, you know, make that happen, make that go down. So, but before we get into that, man, Miles, what's popping? How you been? How's, how's life? I'm good, man. Just working, man. Hustling, man. You know what I'm saying? I feel you. I feel you. So, but look, before we get into all the... The craziness. We got to We got to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we're gonna get into it. You guys are listening to the Bad Boy Show. Hey, uh-huh. what's up? It's dating and life coach Mr. Locario. Go to badboymembership.com and master the dating game by joining my Bad Boy Membership program. In this program, you'll receive 45 through 90 minute, easy to follow, step by step dating advice tutorials that's guaranteed to help you attract date and have sex with beautiful women join the bad boy membership today by going to badboymembership.com that's badboymembership.com yeah Mm. okay we're back we are back on the bad boy show yeah so you know there's been some uh some stuff going on in the news man some new shit some new stuff so uh people were talking about the whole uh, presidential debate shit, you know, going crazy over that. And, <laughs> and, you know, to me, every, you know, people, people are asking me like, Hey, are you going to go vote and all that? And I'm just like, eh, no, like I'm not, we're not, I'm not participating in the clown show. Like it's, it's fun to watch, but it's like, if you, like, if you're really taking this seriously, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know like what's going on in your life where you take a uh, presidential debate seriously because it's right. not, it's not think about it think about this what what has really uh happened in your life uh from all the time you've been alive that the presidential debate or the the you know a president being president has really affected you like like personally how has it personally affected you you understand what i'm saying right. like right. like seriously like cuz i'm like okay if you if you're 30 years old and you've been through obama clinton Oh, uh, who else? Who was before him? Bush, all these other people. Or Bush was before Clinton. I don't know how these dudes are in the in the fucking row or whatever. But anyway, like, of course, there's shit that happened within the time. But I'm talking mm-hmm. about you personally. I'm talking about the guy living in fucking New Jersey on Newark Avenue, and and he works at Walmart. How how has the presidential shit affected you? Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, I don't. <laughs> that's what I don't get. That's what I don't get. You know what I'm saying? And 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 the thing is, you know, with the whole debate thing, people got to understand that all of this is for show, man. Like whatever's right. going to go down, they already have it written. It's going to go down. The electoral right. the electoral college is the thing that it, they're the ones who pick who the fuck is going to be the president. You understand right. what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, you, gotta, you you know what it is? It's like you taking the same the same disgusting medicine. You just got to choose whether you want to be, take an injection or take a pill. Exactly, you know I mean? exactly. It's the same shit. It's, it's the same poison. It's Most the same shit. Ain't, ain't nothing different going to happen. Whoever gets into office, right? Because because what they do, what they do is is that they make you think you have a choice. You understand? Which is that's like that's some pimp type of shit. You feel what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> <laughs> they make you think you got a choice like oh well you can choose this person or that person so you're participating in this thing it's like no no matter who you choose we're still going to choose for you we're just making you feel like you're doing something you feel what i'm saying right. like it don't matter <laughs> it's it like does- um it's like the the number one illuminati dude um birdman like right. when he asked the niggas on the on the breakfast club if if they finish or they done right exactly like is he finished or is he done? Like is it, is it Clinton or is it or is it, uh, is it, is it Donald Trump? Right, it's you like it's the one? same shit. It was like yo, the, the debates look like 
a contest to see who could prove they're not racist. You feel what I'm saying? That that's what it really looked like. I was like, "Come on, man!" I'm like, "You guys, stop!" And and you know, it's funny if you go back to the debates and you if you look at the part strictly where they were talking about race, both of them right. looked like they were trying to dodge every question. You feel what I'm saying? Like they did not mm-hmm. want to talk about that shit because it's like. They just like both like yo we're 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 both racist like they look like they just wanted to say it like look we're fucking racist like just get over it like you know what I'm saying deal with yeah, the shit we're, yeah. we're, we're <laughs> like we're fucking racist it's like it's like you know what you know what it sounded like it's like if 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 you had uh two dudes on a, on a debate and they're asking them so and they're they're straight men they're like so you straight guys how do you like to fuck men in the ass they're like uh well well you know um. I, I, I sort of, I don't, like, how do you answer that? Look, I'm straight. I can't answer how I like fucking guys in the ass because I don't like to right. fuck guys in the ass. I don't, I can't answer, you know, caring about race when I'm a fucking racist. You feel what I'm saying? Right. Like, I don't like these niggas. That's all they nearly needed to say is I don't like these <laughs> niggas. That's it. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. Like, I can't, I can't stand the clown show. I can't do it. I can't do it. Like, it's just, it's just... It's just too much bullshit, man. I'm like, oh, it's crazy. I, I, I tend to think, I tend to think that like, um, that's like the the uh, politics is like, um, like first wave politics is like your George, your Ronald Reagan's and shit, right? right? And I think um, they all come from the same thing. Like all of the people that run Hollywood and run Viacom and all of those big media companies. Right. It's like they kind of come up with the ideas for the for the for the um, for the political. Um, what's, what's, what 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 am like, I trying to say? It's like they have to. It's like there's an agenda, mm-hmm. right? But they can't literally tell you the agenda, right? right. So they have to kind of write a script mm-hmm. around the agenda. You right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then so. It's like they they do it with movies and then they do it in wrestling and mm-hmm. then they figure out a way to like take those same writers and do the shit in politics. You right, see what I'm saying? right, exactly. It's like it's like they already know who's gonna win. You know, you remember wrestling, right? So they already know who's gonna win SummerSlam and WrestleMania. They mm-hmm. already know, right? But it's like we have to come up with a way to emotionally have you vested in whether you want to see Hulk Hogan win. Or if you want to see match, uh, Randy Macho Man, Randy Savage win. You right, know what I'm exactly. So we got to write the story and we got to make this guy hate this guy and right. that guy not like that guy. And then, you know, see which one the fans like better. And then, you know, we write the story accordingly. And then we, we so when, when Ron, uh, Macho Man Randy Savage wins, people are mad, but they're not mad enough to stop watching WWE. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and they're, 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 they're disappointed, but they still want to watch the next episode. Right, right. So and it's it, like and the it, same shit. It's like they, they, they have a script. They, they know the agenda. They're already emasculating men. They're killing off black people because we serve no purpose in this country anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're boosting homosexuality and population control and diseases and Horrible food, terrible health, so the pharmaceutical companies continue to make a lot of money. Right. So they need those agendas to be fulfilled, but now they're trying to think it, make everybody pay attention to the stupidity of Donald Trump and to the nonsense of Hillary Clinton. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's fucking crazy. It's fucking crazy, man. Man, like shit. I, it's, just, it's just dumb, man. It's just nonsense. But anyway, so in, uh, in other news, in other shit going on in life, um, right. so there was a, it was a, tr- a, a, a it was a train crash in Jersey the other day. What, 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 what was that about? Was it? Um, I didn't even Google this because I, I man, just, I don't know. It was the Amtrak. It or was something. one of them joints, and I think one person died and a whole bunch of people were injured. And um, it was like you know, so yeah, so basically some train crash. I think it was a New Jersey Transit or Amtrak or it was in Jersey or something like that. It was early in the morning. Um, I was asleep, so I didn't. Uh, you know, I I I woke up to this shit. You know when you like. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucked up. You know, you know when you they said that the it was an engine transit right. train, and they said that the engineer claims he has no memory of of the crash. Wow, that's crazy. That's crazy. Killing one person and injuring 
more than a hundred other on wow. a busy morning commute. Yeah. Wow. Don't you? It's, it's one of the things. Cause I remember when that whole uh, um, nine eleven thing happened. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it was like early in the morning and shit. And I was just like, mm-hmm. all the things that, all the tragedies that happen early in the morning. It just won't happen to me because I'm not I'm not up that early. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is not going to happen. So, so you know, if if any of you ever hear of a tragedy happening early in the morning, just know I'm still alive because I'm not I'm not there. You feel what I'm saying? Like it's not happening. <laughs> now, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's not happening. So, but you know, shout out to 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 all those people. Luckily, you know, uh, those other people didn't get killed and everything. And you know, I know that one person. Got it, uh, you know, so shout out to their family. Hope everything's cool. You feel me? Um, so right. in other news, it was a malfunction with the train and it was supposed to slow down at a certain point and it didn't. Right. And, and, um, it jumped the, tra- the train tracks and some shit. And wow. Crashed into the station. Yeah. That's fucked up. That's fucked up, man. You got to be careful out there. But, um, so in other news, in, um, rap, I know all you people heard about this whole thing with, uh, Meek Mill and Beanie Siegel and game and dudes want to fight each other and it's the, all this beef and rap battles and all this other craziness and it's, it's just it's just funny to me and and me and Miles was talking about this other day we were saying that you know Meek Mill is not taking full advantage of mm-hmm. of the fuckery he's not doing it he's he's right. he's leaving so much money on the table you feel what I'm saying. Like we were saying that Meek Mill has to pull an R. Kelly at this point. And we're not talking about pissing on young girls. We're talking about when R. Kelly was, you know, uh, accused of that. All he did was take all that attention and start making hot music. You feel me? And then right. and then motherfuckers just was like, what? What pissing thing? What are you talking about? This guy, his his music is popping. You feel what I mean? Like that's all he was talking <laughs> about was the music. So Meek Mill... All he needs to do is just start doing more music. You feel what I'm saying? And make some hot right. shit and take advantage of all of this fucking uh, publicity he's getting. I'm like, dude, you you got this shit on a pla- like you can, you got to understand something, man. Like like Drake is is the biggest star in the world and he dissed you for a whole year. Like you can't pay for that type of fucking advertisement. Son, are you serious? <laughs> oh, man, like what I wouldn't give for for Drake to 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 fucking do a whole diss song on on the bad boy show and me and Miles and talk about how whack we are and all I I, I would love that shit. You feel Drake saying? would say some shit like, "What do I need, Mr. Lucario? For I'm Drake, I can get as much pussy as I want." <laughs> exactly. <right. laughs> I would Leo. I would, I'm like, dude. Like you know how much promotion that shit is, my nigga. Like, oh my. Then so you had the Drake joint popping. And he promoted you. Now you got game promoting you, and they they doing this shit all for free, my nigga. You ain't had to send him a check or nothing, and you ain't and you ain't putting out no hot shit. You ain't putting out. He supposedly have some some mixtape or some album coming out tomorrow right. or next week or some shit. But I'm like, still within this whole time, I heard one freestyle from this dude. Like the other day, he was on Hot 97 with a uh, right. Funk Flex and his in his uh his boy band behind him. Um, and he was yo. Rapping. How many niggas did you need with you though? <laughs> I did not appreciate that at all. <laughs> I did a- not appreciate that shit at all. You know what, son? If I, straight up and down, if I was ever on them niggas' level, right, right, I would find me a bunch of badass MMA bitches, mm-hmm. right, right. I mean, because I'm assuming you you got these niggas around for security, right, right. I, that's what I'm assuming because so many niggas is hating on you. You probably don't want to get fucked up in the street, right. nigga. I'm getting me. The baddest, the sexiest MMA bitches, and they—that's who's gonna follow me around. Right, right. So niggas, are, niggas are get fooled like, oh, oh, this nigga walking around with bitches, and then anybody run up on me or try to do some shit, they getting fucked up. Mm-hmm. Like I'm have like six Ronda Rousey, <laughs> three in front, three in front, and three in back. Mm-hmm. But why would these niggas roll with bitches though? Be like, I, I don't understand. I don't like. I don't understand it either. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you know what it is maybe it's because Yo. you know what it is maybe it's because hanging out with that many women can probably get annoying you feel what i'm saying no but that's what i'm saying like you think these <laughs> mma bitches will be talking to me i'm not talking to none of them i'm not talking to any of them They're, security guards don't talk are you crazy be like yo be like 
Be like, girl, I don't pay you to talk. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yo, you just make sure you just find, you just pay attention to out to the three hundred and sixty of the crew. Right. So if anybody running up on us, you know what I'm saying? That's crazy. Oh man, but yeah, that's I'm just like, dude, this dude Meek Mill could could just be milking it, you know, harder than like I'm like, dude, you should he should have came out with like ten mixtapes by now already. You feel what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But, should, and, and the thing is too, like you, it, it's easy to come out with with like just songs and just throw them shits on iTunes, right? Like, singles. That's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? And then when you have a, when you have a good enough amount of songs, then you just throw them all on the mixtape and they call it a mixtape and then sell them fucking sell the whole shit again. You right, know? right. And go on tours and do the do the songs that I'm like, dude. You could have, man, I'm like, come on, son. Like, you're you not taking full advantage of the shit. You feel what I'm saying? Everybody else took advantage of this. Like, Drake took advantage of the shit. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, Game is taking advantage of the shit. Even Beanie Siegel taking advantage of the shit. And Beanie Siegel ain't got no music out right now, my nigga. Like, what are you, right. you know what I'm saying? Everybody taking advantage of the shit. Except for Meek Mill. Like, what the fuck? Ah, oh, man. God Yo, bless wait, that I, child, man. He, he, he better be careful though, cause he, he he was talking real slick about all the niggas, especially um, Beanie, cause you right. know, Beanie Siegel is is a nigga that be in in his, in Philly. You know what I'm saying? Right. But but so, see but see Meek Meek Mill's uh dude knocked him out though the other day that was the thing you feel what I'm saying that's the thing right so you know it's it's crazy out there it's crazy out there man you guys just need to st- keep rapping getting that paper because I'm like these dudes is millionaires like what the hell like, you know what I'm saying like dude if I was yo if I was on some rap shit dude I I wouldn't you it wouldn't be no none of that going on like like you would have to you would have to pay me to beef with you you understand what I'm saying like. <laughs> You'd have to pay me. Like, you could say all the shit you want. You could talk about me for a year. You would never hear me say shit to you. You got to pay me to say something about you. You feel what I'm saying? Like, that, it's all business. Like, I don't understand these dudes. Like, come on with that shit. Like, y'all crazy. I'm like, that's that's wild. That's wild to me. But anyway, but anyway, in other news, uh, this is what I thought was interesting. So, you, you, you do Nate Parker, right? He's in the news again because oh, yeah. his, his, his movie's actually coming out, I think, this Saturday. Uh, the birth of a nation. So you know, everybody go out and support. Get that shit popping. You feel me? But um, yep. so, so there's been articles around where it was saying that Nate Parker said he won't apologize for the rape allegations. You feel me? And so right. I was seeing a lot of different um articles, you know, written by women, of course, who were. You know, they were a little pissed off about that. Like, I can't believe him. And how? And I'm like, yo, the, the nigga ain't raped nobody. So what does he got to apologize for? You feel what I'm saying? Right. Like, he was accused and he got, they said, yo, this shit ain't happened. And now it's it's done. So what is he, why would he apologize for some shit he didn't do? You feel what I'm saying? apologize would admit to some type of wrongdoing. Right. Exactly. You feel what I'm saying? That makes no fucking sense. But, you know, they got these articles where these women are like, oh, uh, Nate Parker says he's not apologizing and I'm not going to go see his movie because it isn't because of that and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, man, like, it, yo, yo, this, women, dude, women, son. I mean, sometimes you got to sit back and just like you got to ponder. You got to think like if you just sit back and think about women sometimes because you're like even when shit is literally there right and it's saying look he didn't do the shit you feel what i'm saying right the shit doesn't matter it's not happening like the stuff you're mad at actually doesn't exist you feel what i'm saying right so it's like what if what the, where are you coming what are you talking about you feel what i'm saying like what are we why are we even why is this even an issue like shit happened long time ago they said he didn't do it he got off he moved on they bring it back up and then then you want to the, the person who he supposedly raped ain't even alive anymore right what the fuck is he apologizing for? right you know what i'm saying that's what i'm saying like, man who is he apologizing to you exactly you know exactly exactly you see what i mean it's like it's like the the, the emotions are heavy. See, that's the that's the funny part about um, you know, getting emotional about shit because it's this whole thing ain't, ain't even about Nate Parker. This is about any chick that's mad about this shit. It's about her. You feel what I'm saying? That's right. really all it's about because she's thinking about some time in her situation where something might have happened or maybe something did happen, and now it's bringing up feelings about it. You feel what I'm saying? And now if something right. did happen to a woman in a situation, now that's not a good thing. But at the same time, you can't 
uh, get mad at him for something that he was accused of that happened years ago that they said he didn't even do it or he, you know, it didn't even happen. And then now because you having those feelings, you want to take it out on him. That's, that's the crazy part. Like you can't take out your feelings about something on somebody else because you're feeling it. It doesn't make it. It's, it's retarded. You feel what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I mean, it's like, God damn. And then it's like, they want everybody to sort of just, you know, go along with it and, and, and roll with it because they're feeling that way. And I'm just like, Oh, come on now. Like, stop, like, stop. And this is why, you know, this is, this is, this is why a lot of times truthfully, um, you know, when women are feeling certain ways, like it doesn't get taken seriously because right. at the end of the day is just like it's just how you feel about it. You feel what I'm saying? It's like if it's like if I see something and I get mad about it and like I but now that I'm mad, I want everybody else to be mad with me and I want everybody else to stop what they're doing. I want everybody else to stop what they believe. I want everybody else to do everything that I want them to do at this moment because I'm feeling this way. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, it's fucking crazy. I'm like, no, it don't, it don't work like that. It just, that's crazy. You guys, man, 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 man. I just, it's like, yo, women are so interesting. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to say they're interesting. That's it. They're just fucking interesting. Yes. <laughs> women are interesting creatures. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I'm just like, yo, I'm just like, yo, yo it's too funny. I'm going to see that movie. I'm going to see that movie twice, nigga. Right. For real. Exactly. And I'm going to buy the DVD. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, so what I wanted to talk about um, also was uh, uh, Luke Cage uh, just came out on Netflix. You feel me? So, Miles, you said you saw what? Like the first two episodes or something like that? I saw the first two episodes. Mind you, I didn't even want to watch the second episode. <laughs> After watching the first episode, I'm on. I'm on like the ninth episode, I think, at this point. You know what I'm saying? Really? How? How yeah. did you do it? Because I was. You know what it is? This is this is the complaint that I'm hearing about. For because you know some people they like it. A lot of people saying they like it or whatever. But the complaint that I'm hearing is that people see. You know what? It, you know. You know why I I I I uh, I like it because. I saw the other show that he was in, Jessica Jones, that came out like a year ago or yeah. something like that. So I feel like they're doing it in the same style as her show, meaning right. like this show is not Daredevil. You feel what I'm saying? Like right. at all. It ain't like if you're looking for some Daredevil shit, you're going to be disappointed as it hell. Is not, <laughs> you know it saying? is like, not. It's not Daredevil. Like, like this show is just, this show is like a drama sprinkled with fighting. You feel what I'm saying? Like right. it's it's sprinkled. It's not it's not a uh, like a it's not like an action show. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like it's like a right. regular drama show sprinkled with some fighting in it. Like you know what I'm saying? Like if you're going into to Luke Cage looking for like super action, it ain't gonna happen. You feel what I'm saying? Like it's, you're gonna right. be disappointed as hell because it truthfully a lot of the shit is kind of slow. If, if you wanna if you wanna be real, you know what I'm saying? That's, like, son, that's what I that's what I man. <laughs> That shit is slow as hell, dude. Like, because I was thinking the same thing. Because as I'm watching it, I started to realize what type of vibe it was gonna be. I was like, okay, this is gonna be one of these slow ass shows. Because there was literally a scene. I think it was in the maybe the first or second episode where he's sitting outside with the the uh, the, the the dude for that works in a barbershop, and they're just talking back and forth for like it seems like damn near ten minutes. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like a like a damn Quentin Tarantino movie. You feel what I'm saying? Like. Like that's what it looked like, and you're just but, like, yo. No, but see, that's the you know what kills me. There's there's a lot of dialogue. Mm -hmm. They don't be talking about nothing interesting, though. Right, right. right. That's the thing. Yeah, it's true. Like it'll be, because it'll, I'm like, no. If you want to have dialogue, that's cool. But mm -hmm. can we talk about some shit that makes me want to listen? Right, right. <laughs> like niggas is like niggas is literally like using. It, it's like I I hear them um like they try to sprinkle in shit that like you know urban people would say right it, it, it like like it sounds like a fucking you know like a team of writers who just moved to brooklyn mm -hmm. made wrote half the shit you feel what i'm saying <laughs> oh man that's just like, funny it's like oh it, it'll go over because black people are actually gonna say the words so even with the uh, uh um 
a, a, a team of gentrified writers trying to write the shit. Right. It, it should it should sound all right because black people are saying the words. No, no, right. no, man. This shit is slow. This shit is uninteresting, and like, it's, like the shit is so slow that the bad guy doesn't even seem that much like a bad guy. <laughs> That's how slow it is because he'll do some shit and it, it's like, well, you know, sometimes you got to do do what you got to do. Right, like, right. It's like it, it's just moving so slow. It's like, well, you know. I guess he felt he had to do that. You right, know what I'm saying? Like, right. <laughs> I didn't feel like, damn, that's fucked up. He shouldn't have done that. You know what I'm saying? And, but you know what it is, too? I think it's because also the character of Luke Cage... Yeah. He's like a uh, he's like one of those guys, you know those guys that that you, that you're you're cool with and but they're right. kind of like in the corner and they're kind of they're kind of boring, you know what I'm saying? Like like yeah. he's one of those he's one of those quiet dudes that that just chill in the corner and then he says like one thing in the conversation and then you know what I'm saying like but he sits back and watch everybody else talk. He's one of those dudes. You feel what I'm saying? So you kind of And not for nothing. And not for nothing. He's two two seconds away from being the damn simp. Right, that too. So, <laughs> but you know what? I, you know what? I, what I what I found. Yeah, but I don't know if I'm ready yet. <laughs> you know what? You know what I found funny though was it was the last episode I saw. I'm not going to give away too much of what happened, but this this yeah, this. Please don't give it away because there's not much to give away, no. son. So you can't. <laughs> no. You can't do that to people. <laughs> no, <laughs> but this is the part that that had me, and I didn't even catch it until after it happened and it was it was like on some symbol, some symbolic racist shit right so right you know everybody in the show knows that he can you know he can uh catch bullets or whatever like bullets don't kill him or whatever right so right there's this scene where he's he's walking in the street and he's you know he's like uh going somewhere or whatever and these two cops stop him or whatever right he's a white cop and a black mm-hmm. cop right so he mm-hmm. has he has his hoodie on Mm-hmm. And so oh. he's, so he's walking and he's trying to walk away, or whatever. And they were looking for him because you know somebody framed him and all the other shit. But you know whatever, that's not really giving away too much. But anyway, so the, the cops is looking for him. So he turns around and the cop is like, "Take off your hoodie." He takes off the hoodie, right? So then the yeah. two cops is like, "Oh shit, it's you know it's Luke Cage. We gotta you know." So they point their guns at him and they're like, "Get on the ground, get on the ground, blah blah blah." So Luke Cage is like, you know. Nah, I can't really fuck with this right now. I gotta like get away from these these two cops because I got shit to do, right? So this motherfucker. Right. So this is what happened. He slaps the white cop in the face, right? Mm-hmm. Then <laughs> So then the the black cop takes out the gun and starts shooting Luke Cage in the back, right? Now, mm-hmm. as he's shooting Luke Cage in the back, Luke Cage is shielding and protecting the white cop. From the bullets, uh, you see what I'm saying? So I was like, "Come on, my nigga!" Like, so you got the black uh, cop shooting the black man who's protecting the white cop. I mean, come on, son. Uh, what y'all like? Come on, so why I why I why I gotta do that though, man? I mean, am I reaching? Am I reaching? You know, what I'm saying? Like, because because I'm like, yo, I'm like, oh my god. No, he, you see, like I could, I, I could say you're reaching, and people who might say you're reaching, right. but you gotta, you gotta understand that none of these, nothing that's written in any of these shows is is um is done by accident. Exactly. Not one thing. Exactly. You Not know? one fucking thing. <laughs> Just like in in the Get Down, I love the Get Down. Right. Until they, and I was waiting for it because I knew it had to happen. Until they put in the fucking. The gay part with uh with right. the boy um Jaden Jaden right exactly and yeah. I'm like I was I was like oh my god I was like why do they have to do this right exactly like that, like, that part of the story didn't even really like I, I mean I, I don't know I, maybe maybe it had something to do with the New York culture and all that shit but right. It ain't really like necessary, necessary. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And and you notice how they'll they'll put a a, a person like Jaden in that role because you already associate him with all that, you know, with that shit. androgyny, right? Ambiguous right. nonsense, right? right. You see what I'm <laughs> so, <laughs> that's how they do. That's how it works. That's exactly how it works. You feel what I'm saying? Because like, yo, they now now imagine you got a show like Luke Cage, and you know you, you, they make it, you know. Cause I was reading this post about the show, and then somebody was leaving comments, and they were saying, "Oh, it was like, oh, so you're gonna have a show with a black man 
who who who's bulletproof so he's like so y'all can't complain about getting shot because y'all niggas could take bullets right you feel what I'm saying? exactly <laughs> It's, no, you're right. Like, look how many other Marvel stories they could be doing right now. Right. But they're going to do a, a fucking story about a guy that's bullet, a black man that's bulletproof while right. niggas is getting shot in the street. Right. Exactly. It's like it's like they it's like Hollywood is secretly laughing at niggas. Right. Like yeah, all y'all wish y'all was bulletproof like this nigga, but you're not. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, 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 ah. I'm t- it's fucked up. It's fucked up. <laughs> oh God, it's crazy. Oh, it's terrible. No, but it's it's real. It's real talk, man. I'm telling you, like, cause I, yo, I look at everything, man. I'm I'll be looking because, like, you gotta understand, uh, like, shit is symbolic. Do you understand what I'm saying? There's a lot of symbolism when you watch things on TV and movies and and in art, all that shit. You feel what I'm saying? So don't just take shit for face value. You gotta peep how these now, niggas. Now, you know what? You know what, son? I just realized. I just realized straight up and down. Right. Luke Cage is. It, it it actually is Hollywood laughing at niggas, my nigga. Right. <laughs> I'm saying. Because honestly, there's no way, there's no way that the fucking script could be that terrible. <laughs> Unless they doing it on purpose. Oh shit! Oh shit! And it's of course, they're laughing at the fact that niggas is getting shot in the street. Right. On a on a on what on a weekly basis, basically. Right. Right. It's, you understand what it's I'm terrible. Saying? It's terrible. It's so crazy. It's so fucking crazy. I no, don't know, man. Fun. Look, in the first two episodes, mm. there's the bad guy, Cottonmouth, and then there's his cousin, right? Right. And she's supposed to be some type of fucking, like, state senator or some shit, right? Mm-hmm. Right. And she is in every scene he is in. Right. And in every fucking scene... They 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 refer to the fact that she doesn't want to be seen with him. Right. <laughs> like what kind of dumb shit is this? <laughs> oh man. It's funny. It's funny shit. What kind of dumb shit is that? It's funny shit. Like how many times are you gonna well, how many times are you gonna refer to the same idea? Right, right. The, yo, the script is slow, the pacing is terrible. Right. And nothing nothing happens for a whole fucking episode. Right. Nothing happens. Right, this shit is it's a slow it's a slow show. You gotta if you gotta you gotta understand that like uh, if you're gonna enjoy this show, you gotta be prepared for that slow shit. You feel me? That's what you gotta be prepared for. But anyway, but listen, <laughs> but listen, we got gonna... the, the only one, the only person who can really do that type of shit is Quentin Tarantino, my nigga. Right? They should the they should have had him do the dialogue if they was gonna make it like that. You feel me? Exactly. Right. Exactly. <laughs> But anyway, so yeah, you guys check out Luke Cage. Let me you know, let us know what you guys think on that shit. You know what I'm saying and all that. But um, listen, we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna be talking about how to make the dating game easier for you. You guys are listening to the Bad Boy Show. Do you want to learn the easiest way to have more sex with more women? Then get the critically acclaimed book, How to Have Sex with Two Women a Day. In this book, you'll learn everything you need to know about attracting and sleeping with beautiful women. That's How to Have Sex with Two Women a Day. Get your copy today at MrLocario.com. That's M-R-L-O-C-A-R-I-O.com. MrLocario.com. Are you an actor who needs headshots? Do you have an event or a wedding coming up and you need a photographer? If you do, make sure you go to pavionphoto.com. Pavion is a professional photographer who will supply you with high quality video and photography services for any event. Contact him at pavionphoto.com. That's P-A-V-I-O-N photo.com. Pavionphoto.com. All right, people, we are back <laughs> yeah. on the Bad Boy Show. Luke Cage. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, we're going to be talking about. Oh, real quick about Luke Cage. One more thing. That that uh, the black chick that he that you know the cop that he smashed. Right. She 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 get the business though. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. She yeah, can get yeah, the business. Yeah, she, you know. She's so. right. She's right. She's right. <laughs> Right, right. But, but other than that, nah, she, she, she's cool. She'll get, she'll get the business. But anyway, she'll so, <laughs> so now, <laughs> so we're talking about how to make the dating game easier for you. All right, so the thing is, you know, when we talk about this, I want to, I want to make something clear. 
when we say easy, right, or easier, that's all it really means. We're not saying that we're not talking about magic formulas, magic pills, you know, do this thing right here and you're going to get 10 girls in your bed tomorrow. No, we're talking about making it easier than it already is. You feel what I'm saying for you so that you can, you know, make it flow better. You feel me? Because a lot of times, um, you know, a lot of guys, you know, when you're out here in the game and you're trying to talk to girls and you're trying to make this stuff happen, you know that you got to put in some type of energy or some type of work to in order to get shit popping. Right. But it's like if you, you know, do things a little bit more in a in a more uh, beneficial way, meaning that you maneuver in certain different ways that makes it a little bit more easier for you, then you'll get better results without having to. Uh, overextend yourself or having to go the extra mile to try to do so many things to try to make shit work. You feel what I'm saying? Right. And it's, it's, right. it's just basically understanding how to get into a mind state and a flow that sort of works for you. And then seeing, you know, different patterns of things going on and understanding yourself when you're dealing with women, understanding different types of girls you're going to deal with, understanding the chicks you should continue to see, the chicks you should charge to the game and all this other stuff. Right. So it, it build up your efficiency number. It, exactly. You know what I'm saying? So I got yeah. a couple of things that we're going to talk about here. When it comes to, you know, making the dating game easier for you, right? So the first thing I have here is, number one is focus on more things besides women, okay? Focus on more things besides women, right? So what that means is, is that you have to have something. I talked about this actually in my um, DVD, Manhood in the Game. So make sure you guys go to... Uh, MrLocario.com and get Manhood and the Game DVD. So basically, right. when I'm saying focus on other things, more things besides women, I'm talking about focus on things you're passionate about in life in general. Like you have some hobbies, you have something that you like doing, you ha- you might you know be into business or whatever, you have something you're working on, focus on those things. But at the same time, what you also can do, what you also do is that you still um, interact with women. So what I'm saying is, is that the focus is more on the things you're doing more so than the women. But you still can interact with the women simultaneously as you're focusing on what you're doing. So basically what that means is, is that let's say, for example, like you are, you know, you're a guy that's like a mechanic and he likes to fix things and you you're trying to start up your own mechanic shop or whatever. So you're focusing on that shit. You're, you're thinking about, OK, what do I need to do uh, to get this popping? You know, what are the, some more stuff do I, that I need to learn? What, what do I need to study and this and this and this and that? Now, while you're doing that, you might meet women just in your everyday life. Like you might hang out with one of your boys. You know, on a weekend, you go out to a club or a party or whatever, you meet some chick or whatever. Now, you meet the chick, you get her number, you know, you probably, you know, you text her and you see what's up so I can set up a date or whatever. But the thing is, is that since you're so focused on all the other shit that you're doing, what's going to happen is, is that you're not going to be focusing just on the girl you understand and this is why a lot of times it messes up when you're dealing with women is that you get with a girl's number or you get some chick's number you like you get all excited you're thinking about her all the time you're thinking of when should i call her when should i say this should i do this should i do that so all your focus is on her instead of your purpose and what you're what you you know the other things you can do so right. now when you're doing your thing let's say you 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 text the chick and you say hey let's get together on friday and get a drink or whatever right and after you text her, you leave it at that. And then you're focusing more on your the other shit you're doing. So now, since your focus isn't just on her, it's on these other things, you sort of have her in the background. So whether she calls you or not, you're still you're still like whatever. You understand? And then when she and then when she does call you and you chill with her, there's not that needy, thirsty energy that you usually would display because you have other things that actually take up your time and that actually make you happy and that actually make you enjoy your life so when you deal with her and you hang out with her if you had a good time with her you're like yeah he had a good time you know let's get together again sometime and then a whole week will pass by sometimes even before you call her again because you're so busy doing all your other shit you feel what i'm saying so right a lot of and then that's the thing that makes a woman uh want to continue to see you because one you become more of a mystery because she is 
um, you know, she's not really sure how you feel about her yet because you're not even sweating her or anything like that. Also, it gives her time to think about you and, you know, wonder what you're about because, again, you're not giving her that time and that attention. You feel what I'm saying? And so a lot right. of times girls like that end up starting to call you and hit you up. So imagine you're doing that same, you know, type of thing with four or five different girls. You feel what I'm saying? So then you have four or five different girls in rotation that are eager to actually hit you up and see you because you're so busy doing your own shit. This is kind of like how you get a girl or get women in general to chase you because if they're feeling you, they're going to want to get get at you. And the reason that why they need to get at you is because you're not getting at them so much. And the reason why you're not getting at them so much is because you're focusing on your other shit. You feel what I'm saying? So right. it's it's very important to to understand that aspect because a lot of times, you know, even when I get emails from certain dudes and, or I talk to certain guys is like, sometimes I can tell when a guy doesn't really have that much going on because his focus or that he puts so much importance on a woman or getting women. You understand what I'm saying? So you get chicks, but you don't have to focus on that as the most important thing. You feel what I'm saying? Because then that's going to make it harder for you. That's like the, that's almost like the, it's almost like ironic. It's like, you know, the more you focus on that and the more you push to get them, the harder it is to get them. You feel what I'm saying? It's like, it's fucking crazy. It's fucking crazy. You know what I mean? So, so number one is, you know, try to focus more on shit, you know, other things besides just getting women. You feel me? And that will actually get you more women. So now the second thing I want to talk about uh, to make it easier for you is you have to recognize when a woman is cooperative and then you have to give that girl or those women more attention. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. So, so what that means is a lot of dudes spend a lot more time dealing with uncooperative women. They say, well, she didn't call me back. So let me wait a, a couple of days and hit her back again. Or I, I text her again, but I didn't hear from her. So like you're, you're caught up in this, like, back and forth trying to get this girl to like you or trying to get this girl to uh to to cooperate but she's not really doing it she's giving you a hard time she's giving you the run around shit ain't going the way you need it to go and then you're still trying to make something happen because you have that scarcity mentality you're not really dealing with other women and so on and so forth now let's say you go out with a chick and she's cooperative like she's feeling you you know you have a good time she's responsive to you sexually you know y'all make out y'all do all this other stuff yeah you know you hit it or whatever and when you text her she texts you back she wants to meet up with you everything is cool right so when you rec- when you recognize she's cooperating right you can still talk to other women and do this and do that but the thing is is that you have to reward technically on a, you know quote unquote reward her for good behavior meaning that she gets more of your um attention than a girl who, you know, you just started talking to, but she's sort of like wishy-washy and she's uncooperative or whatever. Because what that does is it does two things. It makes her want to cooperate more with you because she sees that she's getting, you know, that you're feeling her and she's getting that attention and she already likes you in, in, in the first place. And two, you're training yourself subconsciously to only fuck with women who cooperate. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because right. you're, you're reinforcing your, 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 yourself to say, oh, snap, you know, I like this more than the other stuff. You feel what I'm saying? So when you get more of the other stuff, you're going to quickly, in in a lot of cases, dismiss it. And then that's going to make it easier for you to get more shit popping with women. Because now what you're going to do is, is that the more that you're running into chicks who cooperate, the more that you're going to be, you know, interacting with them. And then that's going to make you condition yourself to interact with more chicks who cooperate. And then that's going to make you meet more chicks who cooperate because that's what you're going to be attracting more. And the other chicks who aren't cooperating are going to to fall off. And then you're going to have more and more women who are cooperating. And that's going to make it easier for you to go on dates, have more sex and all this other stuff. You feel what I'm saying? So it's better, it's better to have two chicks that you're dealing with who's cooperating versus trying to juggle 10 uncooperative chicks you feel what i'm saying so right. it's like you got to understand that shit and and this is something i had to learn you can't you can't you know. control women right right you know don't ever think that you can't right it's, it's true it's true and that's something i had to learn myself because there was times where i was dealing with a whole bunch of uncooperative chicks and it was like annoying and stressful and i'm like oh well why this and why they acting like that and this and this and that and i was like you know what i'm gonna just 
I'm gonna just like kick it with the chick who like she's first priority, the one, the one or the ones who are, you know, being more responsive. I'm gonna holler at them first and deal with them. And then, you know, if they're not available at the time or if I'm, you know, let me if I meet a new chick, she's in a trial period. So I'm seeing if she's cooperative. And if she's not, I just dropped her. And then I just kept fucking with the girls cooperative. And then I meet another girls cooperative. And then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna deal with these two because they're cooperative. Even while I'm meeting other girls and when I, when the other girls don't reach the standard of cooperation that I'm looking for, I kick them to the curb. You feel what I'm saying? Right. So is, is that, that type of shit. You got to recognize when a chick is cooperative and then give them, you know, uh, more, give those chicks a little bit more attention than the other ones. Now, what you don't want to do is you don't want to sweat those girls who are cooperating with you, meaning you don't want to, uh, you know, call them 10 times a day. I'm not talking about that type of attention. I'm just talking about that. Since they are cooperating with you, you cooperate with them, meaning that if you say, hey, you know, let's get together Friday, you know, they say, yeah, and they actually show up and you show up and y'all actually sort of keep it real with each other in that aspect. So there's that respect thing there where it's like y'all both know y'all feeling each other. Y'all both have that sort of courtesy to be accountable in that sort of sense. And then you keep it moving with that that chick. You feel what I mean? So it's like that type of shit. So you got to, you know, do that. Now, uh, the third thing we got on here is to make it easier for you in the dating game is you have to set yourself up to be chosen. Okay, what does that mean? Set yourself up to be chosen. That means that you got to understand that, you know, at the end of the day, chicks are the ones who choose because guys go out there and pursue and talk and they're saying, hey, you know, let's get make something happen. And then so the woman has to make a choice. Either to you know say yes or no if they want to make something go down, right? But when you say when we say set yourself up to be chosen, that means that a lot of times there are going to be situations where women are going to choose you automatically because of your whole vibe, your confidence, how you know your appearance, all these other things. So if you work on how confident you are and you work on your appearance, how you put yourself together, and you know you work on how you interact with women and all that other stuff, all those things are going to make it easier for you to be chosen. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the thing is, you can go out and you can talk to this girl, talk to that girl, talk to that girl. And by you talking to them, uh, you know, chicks, they're going to choose what, you know, they're going to choose up if you're talking. Now there's going to be times where you're going to be at a party, at an event, and you walk into a room and a woman is already choosing you before you even say anything. You feel what I'm saying? So all you need, really need to do is to just go up and start talking and not, you know, say anything too crazy and everything is cool. You feel what I mean? But the the more that you get yourself uh, hooked up, meaning, you know, you shave, get a haircut, wash your ass, put on some deodorant, put on some nice cologne, put on some clean clothes, clothes that fit you. And then also your mind state when you're dealing with the chick, you know, be confident, don't let uh, you know, the outcome of how women are reacting to you, throw you off, be comfortable with talking to her and saying things. When you start doing those things and and, and you combine all those things, it's going to make it a little bit more easier for you to get chosen. I mean, it's going to be easier for women to be attracted to you. You understand what I'm saying? Because you got to you got to understand this. There's a lot of t- like, you, you know, when chicks say shit like, Oh, I can't find a good man. And I, and you know, it's, you know, these guys out here are fuck boys and all this other blah, blah, yada, 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 yada. Right. Now, the reason why women say this a lot is because even though women get a lot of attention from guys, let's say a girl is on an online dating site and, you know, within a week, she got like 50 messages or 60 <clears throat> messages out of those 50 or 60. She probably liked two dudes, if that much, right. maybe two or three. Now, what I'm saying is, you need to become the two or three. You feel what I'm saying? And so you become the two or three by stepping up your game, stepping up your, your appearance, stepping up your confidence, stepping up your, your, uh, you know, your verbal game, all of that stuff. This is why we talk about game here. We talk about, you know, learning the game and understanding the game because when you get tight on your end, pause, um, you know, you actually are going to, uh, you know, be able to attract women easier in that in that regard you feel what i'm saying so the the more on point you are when it comes to you doing your thing then it's going to be easier for women to or it's going to be women are going to be attracted to you a little bit more easier than or than usual or a little bit more than usual i should say right so that you know when you set yourself up to be chose 
that's the thing that's going to make it a little bit easier for you to get your pop in. You feel what I'm saying? So that's uh, the third thing, right? Now, number four is make sure that you have a good social circle, okay? So what does that mean? What's a social circle? That's basically a group of friends that you know that know other people and then you can get introduced to those people then you can get introduced to their friends and all this other stuff so that means that you have to be able to be comfortable going out talking to people you know under like networking with people understand like what's going on in your city understand what's going on you know um around your town or whatever it is and get to know people men and women just get to know people because those people know other people and then that's how they'll introduce you to other women and certain women are more comfortable hooking up and getting together with people that, you know, that they know they like, Oh, well, my friend knows you. So now you must be cool enough or you must be chill. So I'm going to fuck with you. You feel what I'm saying? So there's a lot of chicks that I got with just because my friend knew her or I knew this guy that knew her or I was at this party and they introduced me to this girl or whatever it is. You feel what I'm saying? So instead of having to, all the time go out and you know cold approach there's times where you can just hang out and chill and you will know somebody who knows somebody and that's how you'll get shit popping you feel what i'm yeah, saying yeah, yeah like it's real talk like i remember one time i was at um i met this dude at a networking event so he was like yo i'm having this event at this spot you should come through you know it's gonna be at this um it was like a, a bar slash lounge type of thing so i go to the spot and this dude had maybe like I'd say like maybe like a it was like a section of people. It was like maybe like a hundred some people and it was like 60 chicks. And he personally introduced me to maybe I think like 25 or 30 girls. You feel what I'm saying? Like just in that little time frame. You feel what I mean? So it was like just off of that, you know what I'm saying? It was able to like, you know, get the numbers, do this, do that. Just off of that, that one guy that introduced me to all those other people. You feel what I'm saying? So that's why you got to, you know, uh, don't sleep on that social circle thing. You feel what I mean? So you got to understand what's popping with that. Um, Next thing uh, I want to talk about is get to the point when you talk to women. That's going to make it so much easier for you. Pretty much. You know what I'm saying? Like, Like get to the motherfucking point. I remember I did a video about this the other day. I'm like, yo, get to the point quickly it's going to be so much because either one of two things is going to happen either she's going to be with it or she's not going to be with it but the thing is you're going to know quickly you understand like always tell this story like my uh, one of my boys he was walking around he he met some chick off the street they walking around chilling talked for like an hour and he was like oh you know you seem cool let me get your number and she's talking about oh i can't have a boyfriend you feel what i'm saying so he wasted an hour talking to this chick and she had a boyfriend so now if he would have just gotten to the point when he first talked to her and said hey listen mm-hmm. you know you kind of cute give me a number we should get together oh i got a boyfriend okay cool peace out have a nice day he would have saved himself an hour you feel what i'm saying so so you, you got to get to the goddamn point you feel what i mean so and then when you meet a chick you get to the point you say look i'm trying to do this i want to do that what's good and if she's feeling you she'll be down with it and she'll make it happen and then now you're right. actually getting shit popping literally right now because you got to the point versus if you were just beating around the bush, you know, trying to take all long, trying to think you got to talk to her about a whole bunch of different shit. And you know what I'm saying? It's like you don't got to do all of that. Just get to the point and, and make it happen. You understand? You got to remember, like, these women, they weren't born yesterday, man. They know. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to put you to, to put your order in. Exactly. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Because honestly. Honestly, don't, you know, don't get it twisted. Like we live, we we live in a uh, uh, we live in a pretty like you know fast society. Like things are happening fast all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like right. people are busy. People got shit to do. You know, bitches got selfies to take. You know right. what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. So sometimes you just gotta get to the point, man. Just just you know, yo, what's good? You know what I'm saying? Where you from? Word. All right, cool. Yo, you cute? Give me a number. Boom. That's right. It. Right, like, <laughs> you ain't got you ain't got to throw nothing else to it, man. Because if she feeling you, she feeling you. If she not, she not, man. Right, keep that shit moving, man. These bitches ain't really that important, like to be worried about all that shit. You know? Right, and I'm just like, yo, you, 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 I'm telling you, like. And it saves you so much time, so much energy, you know what I mean? Like, because you know what I notice this is what I notice a, a lot happens is that there's times, and especially, um, like when I'm like if I do like online dating or something like that. 
where as soon as I get to the point where I'm like, like, I'll, I'll just hit them up with one message and then they'll reply. And then I'll be like, so when are you free? We should get together, you know, um, give me a number or some shit. So I'm already getting to the point on a second or third message. Right. And usually what will happen is either they'll send me the number or text me the number or they'll they'll just stop they'll stop tech typing to me you understand like they won't respond right. you feel what i mean and i love either one of those outcomes because if they don't respond then she she already showed me up front that she was an attention whore you feel what i'm saying right. because i'm i'm saying look let's get together like this is the point why we're even on here to get together so if i'm saying give me your number let's do something and you have no response that means that you were expecting to have this long ass dialogue and 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 right. you know hit me back and forth with all this bullshit because you probably was like oh i want to get to know him more blah blah no listen are we are we getting together or not? That's all we need to know. You know what I'm saying? Like, cut, cut all the bullshit. So if she's not responding, then to me, that's like, okay, cool. I'm, I'm going to keep it moving. Now, there's other schools of thought that'll say, well, you know, you should you should uh, text her a little bit more things because, you know, you want to build rapport and, you know, she wants she probably wants to get, you know, you more. And I, you know, and I've heard all those things where some women will be like, yeah, you know, I just want to like women will text me on there talking about can we text more because I want to get to know you more. I want to hear. No, no. Do that with some other dude. You understand? Like if you want to do that, cool. And sometimes when you do do that, you know, uh, a chick will come around and shit will go down. But my question always is, do you really want to uh, waste that much time to find out? You feel what I'm saying? Right. Because I feel like this is what I this is the way I look at it. I look at it as I feel like I'm putting this woman on a pedestal by engaging in that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because the point is for me to get what I want. And what I want is to hook up with some chick and that's going to cooperate as soon as possible so we can make something happen. You feel what I'm saying? So right. if you're not doing that, why am I wasting time on you? I, I don't even know you. You don't know me. I don't know you. So why am I wasting time going back and forth for, for 20 messages, getting to know you so that at some point you can change your mind and say, well, I don't feel like seeing you. You feel what I'm saying? Why would I why would I do that? And then and then if, if you do um, uh, want to come see me or whatever after that long ass exchange. It's still basically me acquiescing to your demand of what you wanted. Like I'm no, you know what I'm saying? Like what, right. what are you talking about? You feel what I'm saying? I'm like, hell no. So so you know, get to the point. You'll be it'll be so much more easier for you guys. Trust me. And and I and and you know, that's not to say that if you if you if you meet a chick online or otherwise and you find her interesting to talk to. Right. Naturally. Naturally. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't, you know, engage her in conversation. Right. Because, again, back to what, rule number two, to increase your social circle. She Mm -hmm. could be a part of your social circle if she's actually interested. Exactly. Exactly. You understand what I'm saying? So don't, don't like, don't throw it away if that's what, that's where it leads to. Because not every chick you talk to is, you know, you go smash. Sometimes you, it just might lead to a cool chick that you know that you can, Use you know not use like that, but you know she's a resource to you where to you, other things, she knows right. about a, a, a cool party coming up or a meetup or something going down in the city, one a free concert where other bitches is going to be at, whatever, whatever. You right, know what I'm saying? right. So you know, again, you know, keep your keep your mind open, but don't just you know fall into that long conversation bullshit just because a chick claims that she want to get to know you because she's uncomfortable and all right. this stuff. You understand this? <laughs> There's a difference. Like if you if you naturally start talking to a chick online and y'all messaging each other, and for some reason the conversation gets on the topic of you know your top five MCs or right something, something that you like you, right you know what I'm saying exactly or if you if, if you want an online business and y'all start exchanging ideas about how to market and increase your 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 your, um, your sales or your your you know whatever it is. That that's a natural thing, so you know, follow up with that. You know, right. there's a, there's a, there's a game, there's a part of the game for that too. Mm. You know, as far as it, like like you were saying, increasing your your social circle. You know what I'm saying? But don't be letting these attention whore chicks, you know, lock you into that into that friend zone. You know, emotional tampon zone. You know what I'm saying? Right. And the thing is, the thing that's interesting is what you're saying is that because all those stuff, all the things you're talking about, 
actually benefit you. You feel what I'm saying? Exactly. And, and that's the point I'm saying, because because the thing is that a lot of times when you are talking back and forth to some chick about nothing, that's not benefiting you. That's benefiting her. And you're not really getting none out of it. You feel what I'm saying? So right. so like if you was talking to a girl and let's say like because even I remember one time I met this chick over Tinder and she told me she was like, oh, yeah, I do this. Uh, she was like, I do this um, online magazine. And, you know, that'd be, it'd be cool if I could interview you. So I was like, OK, cool. Let's do this. So we started talking about that. You feel what I'm saying? And because that directly benefits something that I want and that I'm interested in or, you right. know, or if you're talking about a certain topic that benefits you or that you're interested in. But if a chick says, hey, can, can we talk more to get so I can get to know you? And you're like, oh, you're like, OK. And then she starts asking you or saying a whole bunch of dumb shit and you're just like and you're thinking i don't even want to talk about why are we to you know what i'm saying like then you 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 went down the wrong direction you feel what i'm saying like right so that's what you got to understand you know what i mean so you got to remember that it always got to come back to you and it benefiting you because it's 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 not even her fault because it's her job to do that to get shit benefit in her. You feel what I'm saying? Right. So, right. So, so that's why, you know, you got to do what's going to benefit you. You see what yeah, I mean? You know, that's another thing that niggas need to really, 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 really realize. Right. Kids don't give a fuck about you. Exactly. When, 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 when they first, when they first engage you. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, keep that shit in mind. Mm-hmm. A bitch is, she's trying to get what she's trying to get. Right. So don't you ever, ever be afraid of making sure you get what you trying to get. Mm-hmm. You understand? Right. The right. point is, you trying to meet the right person where she trying to get what she trying to get, you trying to get what you trying to get, and y'all meet in that, in that. Right. And it matches. Where both of y'all want the same exact exactly. thing. Exactly. Exactly. That's why you gotta, when you find a bitch that's not exactly. cooperating, or you find a chick that's not really about what you're about, you would have to keep it moving because that chick, that is about what you're about is waiting over there, but you ain't get to her yet because you wait for time talking to this bitch. Right, you exactly. <laughs> Real fucking talk. Real fucking talk, man. And so the last thing before we go, I wanted to talk about, you know, making it easier for you is that you have to start charging chicks to the game more frequently. Okay, you got to You got to start doing this, guys. You got to start doing this. You got to start charging these chicks to the game more frequently because what you got to understand is this, is that there there's a lot of energy that goes into uh, just things in general, like whatever you are, you know, doing and whatever you're focusing on or whatever you're like, you know, interacting with that's energy. You feel what I'm saying? So the thing is, is that if you're, you're wasting all your energy dealing with a girl who's uncooperative, a girl who's flaking a girl who's on some bullshit, you feel what I'm saying? That's taking away energy that you could have used to deal or, you know, you know, to interact with or find a chick who's going to cooperate, who's going to give you what you want. You feel what I'm saying? So as soon as you start to see that, okay, this chick is on some bullshit. This chick ain't really, uh, you know, uh, doing what I what I what I want in this situation then you just charge it to the game don't don't feel like oh well because a lot of guys feel like they feel so invested in it like damn well I got her I went I approached her I got her number I called her we you know we said something but then she flaked but let me try for next week you know so you get all caught up into it because you feel like well I already got her there so let me try to keep it going and it's like if you see that it ain't going nowhere you got to charge it to the game because all that time energy you spend thinking about her energy you spend trying to think about what to text her energy you spend trying to set up that dates and it ain't going nowhere like you're wasting your time you feel what i'm saying so you gotta charge her to the game and talk to the next girl because then you're giving you're 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 freeing up the energy that you would have you would have had dealing with her to deal with someone else you understand what i'm saying which is going to give you even more positive energy to deal with the next chick because if you have a chick that you're trying to get with who's sort of on some bullshit it's it's it sort of fucks with like your your vibe. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because now you you're you're still while you're talking to this new chick, you still have that that fucking residue of uncooperativeness and 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 nonsense from the other chick in your in your in your cipher. You understand? Like you don't need that shit. You feel what right. I mean? So charge her to the game immediately and then start fresh with the next chick. You feel what I'm saying? Like it's like truthfully, I say it like this: like if you talk to 20 girls in like a week or something and let's say or let's say you let's say you talk to a whole bunch of girls but you get like 20 numbers within a week right 
by the end of next week, you probably should have charged like maybe 15 of them chicks already to the game because that's mm-hmm. usually how it's going to go. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you're going to be charging. Like it's going to be a rotation of chicks just being charged heavy. You feel what I'm saying? Like because there's going to be all this goofy shit that's going to happen with a lot of different women. And then you got to charge them. And you got to, again, like what we were saying earlier about recognizing the chicks who are cooperative and dealing with them more. Right. That means that you have to charge the chicks who are uncooperative more. Do you understand? You have to be like, okay, you, you, you're out. You got to look at it like they're on a probation period. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like you first Mm -hmm. fuck with them. You get their number, you text them. And then if she don't text back or if she wants some bullshit, okay, you charge, get the fuck out of here. You feel what I'm saying? Or if you want to be on some other shit, you could leave the shit open ended. This is what I, I used to do. Like if I meet a chick and I text her and we supposed to meet up or some shit and then she sort of like. Uh, wants to change plans or she, you know, uh, like, is like, oh, can we, I'm like, no, listen, I'm like, yo, uh, holla at me later. You understand? And that's the last time I ever speak to her. Now, if she responds back to me, then I'll hit her. I'll say, oh yeah, we could get together. But look, since you flaked the last time or since you was doing this the last time, you're going to have to, uh, you owe me dinner. You got to buy me, uh, 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 some dinner or you got to take me to the movies or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. So right. you, you, you know, you have different ways that you, you go about it. But at the same time, but at the end of the day, you got to make sure you charging these chicks to the game on a consistent basis. You understand? It's like you have to weed out all the nonsense and the bullshit, uh, forever like you gotta this you know what's funny I, this is what i use this is what i do i usually like because like i would do a lot of online dating right so i would usually give a chick um i'll give a chick my number i say hey text me your number right so she yeah. texts me and she'd be like hey this is sharon or hey this is kathy or whatever the hell her name is right and then so i would get her her number because you know the number will pop up and it'll, it'll be a text from her right so that girl, you know, like when a person gives you the number, you save their name in your phone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't save women's names in my phone until after we had sex. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because you're still on probation. Like you're not going to get the space in my phone. You're not going to get that 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 energy. You're not. You know what I'm saying? Like you're still you're still in the, the proving yourself zone. You know what I'm saying? Like Yo, that, that, that's like. <laughs> extra level player shit right you know what i'm saying like you're just the number right now until you prove that it's something else that that you're actually going to be on some cooperative shit because yo i had a a a, a, like a fucking list of 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 numbers in the graveyard you feel what i'm saying that i don't know who this person is you feel what i mean like so so until until something something happened your your, na- your number doesn't get saved. That you know what I'm saying. So it's just like that. So basically, it's almost like you're pretty much charged to the game, and you know I'm not. You're not taking up space in my phone as some some somebody you know significant. You know what I mean? Because you, it's, it's not. Because you're gonna go through a lot of chicks. You're gonna get their numbers. You're gonna you know try to text them, or they're gonna text you, and nothing's ever gonna happen. Or you probably go out with them once, and then you never see them again. You feel what I'm saying? So you know you got to just keep charging them, and it's gonna make it easier for you in the dating game because you're getting all of that uh uncooperative flaky ass energy off of you you feel what i'm saying it, it has right. to be that quick so you know but yeah that's pretty much it that's all that's all we we got for you guys today anything else you want to say miles before we get out of here yo www.bamboymembership.com exactly exactly you guys got to go to badboymembership.com and join the membership today. We have over like 30 something hours of game on there. Like over 30 some hours right now, today. And each month we have new programs. You feel what I'm saying? So the, the, the bad boy membership keeps getting bigger and bigger. So make sure you join that. Also, make sure you go to undeniablegame.com so you can get the free audio program undeniable game which teaches you seven tips on how to really attract beautiful women real shit you feel me and um yeah that's pretty much it so uh oh yeah and remember join the bad boy membership because that's 30 hours that'll keep you occupied so you ain't out in the seat fucking with these cops because niggas ain't right. as bulletproof as luke cage <laughs> exactly <me>? exactly <laughs> for real <laughs> So make sure you guys make that happen, all right? So look, we are out of here. We'll see you guys next time. Remember, the truth is inside you. We out. Peace. Peace. Later. 
Hey, what's up? It's dating and life coach Mr. Locario. Go to badboymembership.com and master the dating game by joining my Bad Boy Membership Program. In this program, you'll receive 45 through 90 minute, easy to follow, step-by-step dating advice tutorials that's guaranteed to help you attract, date, and have sex with beautiful women. Join the Bad Boy Membership today by going to badboymembership.com. That's badboymembership.com.